Listen, alcohol is just out in 2024. There is a rising trend of going alcohol-free or being sober curious, and alcohol the truth is, it's just bad for you and can famously impair your sex life. So if you're looking for another way to unwind, relax, or just have fun, I cannot recommend Vaya's THC gummies enough. Vaya has gummies for every occasion, whether it's to improve your sleep. I love their sleep gummies. I take them everywhere. Your mood or your focus. They even have an aphrodisiac gummy called High Love to boost my arousal levels. High Love has a unique blend of cannabinoids and aphrodisiac exotic herbs that are known for their libido enhancing effects. So I've been using Vaya for a while now and I absolutely love them. They're a super trusted company. They use premium hemp, natural ingredients, and they're known for their premium indoor THCA flower. All their products are made here in the U.S. They got quick and discreet shipping to all 50 states so you can all enjoy them, not to worry, and also super affordable. So head over to viahemp.com and use code EMILY at checkout to save 15% off your order. That's V-I-I-A-H-E-M-P.com. Use code EMILY at checkout for 15% off your order and let me know what you think. Hey everyone, thanks for listening to Sex with Emily. Are your issues with self-esteem and body image destroying your sex life? In this show, I'm talking about some of these key sex-killing issues, plus how to bring your sex life back. I also have special guest Alex Jameson, author of Women, Food, and Desire to Weigh In. And also everyone, thank you so much for supporting my sponsors. And I got to tell you about the most ingenious product I've seen in a long time. You might have seen these guys. They were on the TV show Shark Tank a few weeks ago. They got a huge investment, actually. If you've ever seen the show, that's a really good sign because this is the first time a product like this has been available anywhere. And now they just came on the market so you can experience them too because they're an experience. So it's funny because I actually mentioned them on a podcast a few weeks ago and I got a huge response. So everyone's like, what do you mean? So I'm telling you more. Okay, they're called Spark Swipes. And that's S-P-A-R-K-S-W-I-P-E-S, which are reusable swipes that you slide on your fingers and you brush onto your clothes and hair and instantly smell better. And they smell really, really good, kind of like a Tom Ford cologne. Because we all know hygiene is the number one complaint for men and women. And the problem is you're going out at night and you put on your cologne, your perfume, you smell really good, but hours later, you know, you might not smell so good. You had chicken wings, you had vodka, you had cigarettes, whatever it is. You just carry these in your in your bag or wherever in your pocket, like along with the condom, and you know you're going to get laid that night, but you're like, God, I smell like chicken wings. And you just wipe it on your clothes, you swipe it, and you smell amazing. And also the best part about Spark is that they're infused with the finest fragrances. They have pheromones in them. You know what pheromones are? Pheromones stimulate those primal instincts and with members of the opposite sex. And they actually do. Like you smell, like you can just feel it. Like men will be attracted to you. If you're a woman, you swipe this on. The women will be coming after you. And they actually make swipes for him and her. So spark swipes for him smells amazing. And you always get that like, what are you wearing? You smell so good, which will get her attention. And they slip on your finger. It's kind of like a finger puppet. I'm trying to like, I want you guys just like go to the website and check it out. And you swipe it on your clothes. And again, it has like odor neutralizers. So if you were like smoking or doing something you don't want her to know, you'll instantly smell like pheromones and she'll be so attracted to you. And these things work. Also spark for her Women, stay sexy on the go. And you know when you, when you're a woman, like, do you ever carry, like, perfume and you're like, God, I put too much perfume on? This can't happen to you. This actually works because perfume doesn't really mask the smell. You just smell, like, a lot of perfume and you smell like smoke. But this actually gets rid of it. So you use spark swipes on your clothes and hair. You'll get all the attention. They are genius. So here's a special deal for my Sex with Emily listeners. Go to sparkswipes.com slash Emily, use code EMILY20, and you get 20% off your purchase. That's spark, S-P-A-R-K, swipe, uh, that's S-P-A-R-K, S-W-I-P-E-S dot com slash Emily, and then use code EMILY20. Get 20% off your purchase. You can use each one 10 times. They're awesome. They're brilliant. They're genius. Use them. Let me know what you think. They'll change your life, or at least they'll just make sure you get laid, whatever you want. Maybe that will change your life. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Institutions, bedroom eyes, they call them in a bygone day. Hey, Emily, 
You got a boyfriend? Because uh, my man E here, he just got his heart broken. He thinks you're kind of cute. A girl's got to have her standards. Oh, my. Do women know about shrinkage? Isn't it common knowledge? What do you mean, like laundry? It shrinks? Can we not talk about sex so much? Are you kidding me? Oh, my God, I feel so good. Being bad feels pretty good. Well, you know, Emily's not the kind of girl you just play with. Thanks for listening to Sex with Emily. We're talking about sex, relationships, and everything in between. For more information, go to sexwithemily.com where you can listen to all of our podcasts, check out our mailing list. You can have a really good time at Sex with Emily. So I'm just all about a good time, and so is Menace. Yeah, I'm here you with are. Him today. How you doing? How you doing, Emily? What's going on? Oh, you know. This week. This week is a very exciting week. I have to say, I am... Gosh, what's the date? I'm giving a keen... Oh, I'm going to the Sexual Health Expo. If you guys... So this is... Yeah, it's in the 18th and 19th this weekend in Los... 17th and 18th in Los Angeles, Sexual Health Expo. You still have time to go. You can get tickets. It's the coolest thing. It is open to the public and could go to sexualhealthexpo.com or click on the banner on my website and I'm giving a keynote speech on Sunday, but that's not the... I mean, that's a really good part. Mm-hmm. But you know all the people we've had on our show, like the top sex educators over the years, they are teaching workshops that are open to the public on everything from like how to have a menage a trois, fellatio, open relationships, or just how to have better communication. Latest and greatest sex products will be there. It's going to be a cool thing. So everyone check it out. And uh, come see me there. And I'm even the keynote. Did I mention that? Which I'm still writing. Um, what else is going on? I've got four sex conferences this week. Four sex conferences? Yeah, Jeez. A, I know. There's a lot of sex going on. And by sex conference, I don't mean that I'm having like a... Um, sure. A, a sexual... Uh, what am I trying to say? A gangbang. No, a... Um, <laughs> A threesome? What? What's it called? What's it called? A sexual, uh, I don't know. People think like it's like a swingers party or something. But oh, it's like okay. actual information, sex products. Sex <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. What? Question is, do you spend the night at these things or do you just go for the day? Um, I go for the day. It's like three days. Each one's three days. I'm giving uh-huh. awards, getting awards. I'm going to the porn awards, the x porn awards on Thursday night. I'm giving out awards. Okay. I might be nominated for an award. Not at the porn mm-hmm. awards. Different. There's like five award shows. And then next week is AVN in Vegas, uh-huh. which I might go for a night. Remember last year yeah. I went? And I gave the keynote there. And I might just go for a good time. We'll see. I just want to know, you know, what happens after these things. Like what do you mean? You spend the night at a hotel and all these oh, you yeah. know, sex experts are there and it's crazy. Yeah, they're all like, look at yeah, this new toy I got. And they're like, all banging you know, each other. 15 people in a room and they're just like. That orgy. That news. was the word. I can't believe I couldn't orgy. think of the word orgy. Oh, I was like, really? gang bang. No, that's not the right word. It's orgy. <laughs> okay. Orgy's the word. Um, There's like this big crazy orgy you know going what? on. I think those things happen. I <laughs> have to be honest. I've never either been invited or participated in, 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 in mm-hmm. anything with my with my um, colleague, my sex expert. Yeah colleagues but um you know if i do i i will be the first to let you know so yeah mm-hmm. january is all sex month but yeah. i mean they're all fun i mean they're all really good you know it's like mm-hmm. the you know you learn a lot about what's happening in yeah. the, the sex field and stuff like that and i will report back to you asap what's cool. going on with you i am uh, just getting back in the swing of things after a couple of weeks still it's, you know it's a little rough after taking a vacation i know and then uh, just you know, what's it's going to be music festival season again, so I'm sure I'll be traveling to certain parts of the country. So. Do you still do as much as you did when you were in San Francisco? Uh, it's a little bit harder because now I'm with a group of people, so we usually have to take the same amount of time off at the same time and trying to coordinate with four different people and not every person on right. the shows into music festivals. Which you are. Which I am. So there's like two people that are into festivals and then two people that aren't. And then so if it lands in some time where we have time off, then yeah, I'll go. If not, then no. It's so, not part of your... But I'm sure I'll be at Coachella, no problem. I might be at Bottle Rock in Napa, California. Oh, yeah. So if you guys are, if That's you a guys fun are one listening, I, I might be there. So look for me. And my favorite always is in Chicago at Lollapalooza. So I love I those there. peoples. Uh, my, the, the the Midwestern folks. Yeah, I really want to go to Sasquatch Music Festival. Where's that? It's New York? In Seattle. Oh, oh yeah. but there's a one called Governor's Ball in in New York City. Okay. Around there that I really want to go to too. God. And uh, yeah, I'd rather go to sex conferences. And then like in um, Miami, there's the um, dude. 
yeah, go winter ahead. music. Oh, yeah. If you go to that, that seems like whew, too much. But I love South Beach. I was there on New Year's. It was mm-hmm. freaking crazy. It's I'd fun. never been. I, I, I mean, not in years. Yeah. It is fun. I mean, that place goes off. And yeah. I, I love South Beach. Yeah. For I, like I, vacation. Mm-hmm. Not going to live there. You have a ton of new listeners on this podcast because of uh, Loveline and other things that you've been doing. So, but I might have shared the story before for all the old old school listeners. But school. I used to I used to uh, work at a television station. That's how I got um, before I did radio. And this guy that I worked with, he was he was like in his seventies, and he had about thirty grandchildren, ten children, and he always would go to me and he goes, "Look, before you get old, you need to go to Miami." <laughs> You just need to experience it one time really? and just check out Miami. Have you been? And I haven't oh, been you yet. Oh, go. I know. See, here's the thing about people in yeah. California. I grew up in Michigan, so it's like, mm-hmm. where are we going to go? It's warm. We're going to yeah. go to Florida. You know, it's like an hour and a half yeah. flight. Everyone in the Midwest goes to Florida, and the Midwest mm-hmm. goes to Florida. Here, people go to Mexico more. They go to Hawaii. Yeah, San and so, Diego. Yeah. And when I was going to Florida over the holidays with my family, because they go there, mm-hmm. and my, friend, my California friends are like, what, the Florida? What? And I'm yeah. like, oh, but it's, it's pretty cool. You got, I mean, it's a schlep. You got to fly across country, yeah. but it's pretty cool. It takes cool. a while, but yeah. I, I really want to experience it. And I think you should. there's great music festivals out there. Yeah, go do that. And you, speaking about music festivals, you you had a sex romp in a... Uh, at a music festival, Coachella. Oh, Coachella. Yeah, I yes. did have um, sex backstage at, at the Coachella. VIP section. I did. In yeah. the um, backstage on the grass in the VIP section. Near the porta potties. No, no, it was a VIP. There were no porta potties. No, there were the nice porta potties. Yeah. I did. That was really fun. I forgot about that. That was mm-hmm. like 2006 or something, wow. 2007. And the guy that I was having sex with happened to his friend ran the whole festival. He worked for that mm-hmm. company that runs yeah. it. Um, gosh, I just Golden Voice. There. Yeah. Oops. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What ups? <laughs> I don't think he works there anymore. But we were like on the golf cart. We had the whole thing, and then we like were partying, and then we were having sex. Yeah, it's amazing. It was it's, a good time. We didn't a, get caught or anything. Yeah, people. I mean, music festivals aren't for everybody, but at least experience one in yeah. your lifetime just Some to see what it's people, all about. Yeah, it's, it's a fun thing to do with a partner, with friends, the whole I thing. I don't care if you're in the middle of the country. Find. Just take a road trip and go to a music festival and just see what it's I know. all about. It's not just for the kids. It's for it's everyone. It's not. You can, no matter what age you are, just exactly. go, just do it. So You'll, friggin' right. Okay, so you're You'll right. have a good time. Yeah, I agree. Okay, um, we got a lot today on the show, so mm-hmm. we got to get moving here on Sex in the News. Speaking of things you should do to keep your relationship interesting, like going to music festival, there was a study that came out that the number of sexless marriages in America keeps rising. This is upsetting to me because this has been my job to help people have more sex, mm-hmm. but it's not all about me. The newest numbers are in, and they're not pretty. A study on relationships in America finds that one in five married people in America, 20%, have not had sex in the last month, 12% in the last three months, and 6% have not had sex in more than a year. On average, married Americans reported having sex 1.2 times per week and just about five times a month. And the obvious question becomes, what's causing this increase in sexual inactivity Mm -hmm. among married people? What do you think? And I have another question about yeah. it, too, but uh, okay. I don't know the answer, so well, go ahead with um, that. They say it's trends in marital stability. You know, back in the days before reliable birth control, having a sexist marriage was one way of limiting family size. And then, you know, also unhappy couples who are less likely to have sex were more likely to stay together because of, like, society expectations. Um, they had children they were raising. And, you know, this... You know, it doesn't make sense now because there's an increased divorce the last 20 years. So the study shows the opposite. For most marriages, there's a brief honeymoon phase where sexual activity is higher, followed by a sharp decrease mm-hmm. after a few years. But not long afterwards, sexual inactivity levels off and then it trends even further downward. All right. Here's my question. Who is complaining about this? About the... Everyone. Is it from both sides or just... You mean men and women? Or is it just a men who think... No, it's that everyone. That's... See, no, yeah. it's women too don't want to... It's it's everybody. Sometimes the man wants it more. Sometimes the woman. It's due to both mm-hmm. of them because it, what they say is the, the honeymoon phase wears off. This is what everyone needs to understand is that... It's like I always say, people just, they think they're the only ones who are experiencing this. No, it is naturally going to happen to you when you meet someone new, the sex is new, the novelty, the mystery, the excitement, and then you become more stable. You become, you know, trusting, you have a committed relationship. Those two mm. are opposite. So the things that make sex hot 
the newness, uh -huh. the excitement, the spontaneity. When you become stable and committed and reliable, it's just not yeah. as conducive to hot sex. So you have to start to infuse things into your life that make it more exciting, like take a road trip to a um, sex festival. Yeah, and here's another thing that's messed up about life. Isn't it women get hornier as they get older and men become less horny? I mean, you know, they say that, <laughs> that women like peak in their 40s. I mean, I don't think that we can say that that is conclusive. But, mm. um, yeah, I mean, typically I just think that when you're in a relationship that your sex life is going to wax and wane over time. And the big problem mm. is, is when people do not pay attention to this. They don't prepare for it. They think, you know, well, this won't happen to us because the sex is so hot right now. So that's going to be the nature. You're not always going to be having crazy sex swinging from the rafters, but be prepared for when you realize months have gone by and you're not mm -hmm. having sex anymore, like have a plan in place that you're like right away, you start talking about it. You're like, we need a little trip away. We need to try something new. Yeah. You know, because people just don't, they don't, if you, if you stop having sex and then this becomes a pattern in your relationship and it becomes a little too late mm -hmm. to deal with it and then you just, you know, fall apart. So regular sexual activity in marriages correlated to personal satisfaction, and both men and women report higher levels of overall relationship happiness when they have more sex. So I'm just saying, people, you got to prioritize your sex life, please. Just prioritize do it. Do it. Yeah. Do it, do it, do it. Okay. Also, we have a, um, a guest coming in here. Yeah, we do. Alex Jameson wrote a book called Women, Food, and Desire. Um, and she has a really interesting story and she's a podcast called the crave cast, which provides valuable inspiration information to help you get healthy body energy in the life you crave. And she talks a lot about like women and desire and, and body image issues and even men have body image issues where they oh, don't totally. want to, you know, right. You've had times no. maybe where you're like, I'm leaving my shirt Always. on, turning the lights off. That <laughs> is stress. Body image are like huge killers of people's sex drive. So, you know, I mean, it's just, it's a problem. So she writes about that. She talks about that. She's a super cool woman, and she's going to come and chat with us for a little bit. Cool. Yeah. I dig that. You dig it, dig it, dig I it. I do. Uh, while we're waiting for her to come in, uh, come into the studio, I have a quick story. Mm. In the news just recently, hilarious, uh, a teacher got busted for having sex with a student. It happens every day. Happens every day. But what's crazy about it is she's like in her in her mid-20s, and the, the student is 18, right? But this is happening in Alabama, and the thing is, A, she got busted because she was having sex with the student on her honeymoon. She, like, what? left her honeymoon to go hook up with one of her students. Which, like, fly him out to Hawaii or something to meet her and <laughs> husband? No, I think the, the honeymoon was, like, like in her home, Like, she went to the Holiday Inn or yeah, something in their hometown. Yeah, but so this is happening in Alabama. But uh, apparently there's a law in Alabama, even though the, the, the kid was 18, that if a teacher is busted having sex with a student— that is not 19 or uh, older, they they get in trouble legally over it. It's crazy. Isn't that in most states you get in trouble legally over it? Well, if you're, like, underage. But right. You but even 18, even right. Even 18, yeah. It's Why? crazy. Why? Uh, I don't want to get Yeah. They're all, like, having sex. So that's a little sex okay, news well, that thanks. you guys can Google and read yeah, up on. Yeah, thanks. That makes me feel really good. At least Alex Jameson's <laughs> here. Hi, Alex. Yeah. Hi. Alexandra. Great to see Alex or Alexandra. Alex is fine. Hi, Alex. It's so good to see you. you too. Thanks Before for you came, of course. I'm so glad you're here. I gave you a little like idea, but I gave a little blurb about what you do um, and your book, Women, Food, and Desire, and Great American Detox Diet, and your podcast, and all that. And I'm so glad you're here today because Thank it's you. been a long time coming. Yeah, yeah. And um, I wanted to talk. Well, there was an article I was going to read that I thought would be part of our sex in the news. That I thought that you'd have a good perspective on and then we'll get into some of your stuff so there's a study that came out that said junk food can harm a woman's libido if you're looking for ways to improve your libido as well as the quality of the sex you have changing your diet is a great place to start there are a number of factors that can contribute to a less than ideal sex life but having a diet that is heavy in junk food and other unhealthy products will have an enormous impact both on your body and your bedroom activities. So it's research shows that consuming copious amounts of junk food throughout the day can be harmful when you and your partner want to get down for business. And it's especially true of fast food products, high in phthalates, all that stuff. So I know that you are an expert in this field and so many other fields. So what do you think about that? So I always go to hormones and hormonal balance. And when you look at... High fructose corn syrup, which is how we consume most of our calories in the United States, it really does a number on our hormonal balances. It messes with our insulin, which is also a hormone, and it just has this cascade domino effect, which 
screws with your testosterone, your progesterone. And as we know, if you have low levels or super high levels of any of these things, it's going to mess with your libido as well. So there really is a direct correlation between unhealthy, overprocessed, you know, packaged fast foods and your libido. Right. So we just recommend, and now it's a hormonal thing. Like, do you, okay, well, first of all, let's back up because do you also know that Alex was part of the, the movie Super Size Me? Yes. Did you ever see that movie? I did. I, uh, were you on it? Yeah, she was in it. I mean, I, I, I was halfway watching it. I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. I was at the film dan- the Sundance premiere. Randomly. Oh, nice. How crazy. How crazy. Ten years ago now. Yeah. Ten years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No, but- I was, Morgan and I, we are now divorced, but we were co-creators of the film and I was at the time the vegan girlfriend. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Crazy. And so, but we could tell a little bit about the story was that, that he ate for 30 days. Nothing agreed. but McDonald's. Yeah. To yeah. See the impact. That was a really It was a huge, film. huge movie. It's changed and everything. And he got super sick, right? So in, in yeah. 30 days, he gained 25 pounds. His cholesterol shot up. His liver function was depleted. And... His libido was totally shot. If you, if you, I mean, I wouldn't have said this on camera if right. I had known millions of people were going to see it, including <laughs> my grandmother next to me in the theater. But I was like, I have to be on top. He's always exhausted. Um. So not only were his hormones funky, but when you know when you eat a ton of bad food, your energy is depleted. Your mood is off. So when mm-hmm. you're living a fast food lifestyle, it's totally going to mess with your libido. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So then since then you've been doing, tell me what you're up to now. So I've been coaching and helping people get healthy in the standard American diet landscape that we live in. Most of my clients are women and a lot of them come to me because they, they want to lose weight and they're somehow weight loss resistant, but they've just lost their zest, their vitality. They want to They always tell me, I want to feel good in my body again, whatever that means for them. Right. And for so many of them, they're either not having any sex, they're either not in a partnered relationship, or they're in a relationship, but it's just died. And that's, that's always this like secret that comes out weeks and weeks after we've been working together. So now I start asking that question a lot sooner. Right. Cause it's always there. If you've been, I mean, it's pretty common that that's going to happen in a relationship and people don't feel comfortable talking about it. And they don't realize that it's like having some, a lot of couples, if you don't maintain it and body image issues is one of the big killers of people's sex drive if they don't feel good about themselves. So how do you work with them on this? You just think you're looking as a holistic approach to their diet, to their, do you help them with that? Because of my own health struggles over the years, you know, I was vegan for a long time and then my health started to deteriorate and I started craving meat. This was not in the plan. I'd written three cookbooks on (laughs) veganism and my hormones also started to change drastically you know, my, my menstrual cycle was coming every two weeks and I couldn't fix it within that vegan framework anymore. So I started adding the meat that my body was craving and things started coming back online again. And now it's all good to go. Things are great. But I had this emotional, moral struggle with what I was eating. But as I started eating the meat and my menstrual cycle was coming back online, I also like my libido turned back on again. I did. Okay. And this was all happening right after my divorce. So I, I wanted to call my book Men, Men and Meatballs. Those are the two <laughs> things I was craving. The publisher didn't go for that. I don't no, know. I like Men and Meatballs. I know. Yeah, yeah. That was a great, that's a great title. That is a great title. <laughs> okay, but after you got your divorce, your dating life, you went on over 100 dates in 18 months. I did. How did you do that? How did you find these men? Like, tell me everything. I was dating like it was my job. And I was a single mom now, you know, I had my son over part, you know, more than half time. So when I had a weekend free, I was on it. Okay. Cupid, just like, boom, boom, boom. Who's available? Like breakfast, lunch, dinner. I'm meeting people. Got to get out there. And you know, most of them were first and only dates. Okay. Some of them were horrific, but made for great stories later on after I recovered from the trauma. And, you know, it led to some really fun sexual encounters as well. It was very safe and it was always very appropriate. I was getting my needs met as a single mom in her mid thirties. Um, and I ended up meeting my partner now. Really? The one for three years. Oh, okay. You met him on OkCupid? Through kind of circuitously through online dating. Got it. Oh, that's cool. A friend of a friend. Exactly. Yeah, like you, <laughs> like you went on a date with guys. Like we might not be a match, but here's you became friends with someone or whatever. But it just works. That's really cool. I mean, I it, you I believe that if that's what you want, if you're looking for a partner, make it your job. Absolutely. People are like, oh, I'm just waiting for like a 
date to drop down from the sky, it's not going to happen. Well, I got permission really from one of my mentors, coaches, and she was like, just, just try people on. Don't go on a date thinking you're going to find your next husband. Just see how people feel. You haven't dated in 10 years. It's like how I was approaching my diet. I needed to feel how different foods showed up for me. How does this food make me feel? How does this guy make me feel? It was just this huge awareness experiment. Right. I'm sure. And I'm sure you learned a lot about yourself too and what you were attracted to and what you weren't. Because a lot of people go on dates like, I want this person to like me. I want them to be attracted to me. And it was more like you looked at it as like a learning experience for yourself. I created something called Stealth Dating which was anytime I was in anyone's presence, like I'm buying a coffee from somebody or a newspaper, like how does this person feel? How does my, like what's my body registering right now? It could be a woman, it could be a guy in the subway, it didn't matter, just like how am I reading people's energies? And that really helped me get back in touch with my body again, both dietary wise and relationship wise. How do you just get in touch with their energies? How do you channel that? You know, it's really just like standing like... You know, I'm looking Menace? at you now. Yes, hello. What kind of energy like, are you getting from him? <laughs> <laughs> Amazing energy, like, right? <laughs> I, I, like, I feel really warm in my chest, like my solar plexus, my throat. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of pleasant. It's, like, nice. That's that's good, Menace. Thank yeah. you. I mean, I wouldn't think that with Menace. Um, <laughs> oh, get, just, she you know, doesn't he's very, No, I'm kidding. He's warm and fuzzy. He is. No, that's cool. That I mean, really. So how... I think that's a great approach for people, just to think about dating as a process. To, yeah, how does it make me feel? I think as women, we're so interesting. Like, we want him to like me. This person's like me. And it's or not about us. we're looking for what's good on paper. Or what are his stats? And we're so... What I think is one of the major health issues for women in America is we're so disconnected from our own bodies. We don't know what feels good to us, and we don't then know what to ask for or to declare. You mean sexually? Sexually or mm. dietary-wise, they're, they're kind of the same thing. They are. They are. So let's talk more about that. How can we get people to be more in touch with that? So I really look at cravings. Again, I go I've- back to listening to what your body is telling you. And, you know, cravings are a huge hot button term because people are like, oh, crush your cravings or you should never give in to your cravings, go cold turkey. Like, actually, your cravings are messages. It's just information from your body that something's out of balance. And there's four root causes to any cravings. Okay. To go like the hardcore uh, nutritional route, there's either nutritional deficiencies, there's bacterial cravings. You know, we are 10 times more bacterial than we are human cells in our bodies. But there's also emotional cravings and physical cravings. And most of us don't get enough just (laughs) touch, human connection. A lot of scientists are saying we need at least, what, 8 to 10 hugs a day of at least 6 to 10 seconds apiece just to feel whole. And if you look at lots of studies showing that mammals that are sequestered and not given touch or they're not allowed, you know, little baby animals that aren't, you know, sleeping with all their little kitten mates or whatever, they start to wither and die. They don't thrive. They don't put on weight. I remember the study of the bunny rabbits, like the the, the study that the bunny rabbits who got pet and stuff and the ones who Mm -hmm. didn't and the ones who didn't, yeah, they withered. That's why I always hug you, Menace, for like a good 10 seconds when I see you. That's great. I mean, and it's We all do need touch. We do. Adults need it as well. We think it's only true for babies or for our pets, but it's as true for adults. Maybe more so because we have more emotional stress in our life than anybody else. Yeah. No, it's true. What about people who you're in relationships with? They're like, oh, I'm not a big toucher. I'm not a big whatever. Like, I'm always, I've been with those guys. Like, I don't like massage. I don't like touch. I don't want to cuddle. So, so what's curious to me is that we own more pets in this country than any other country in the world. And we get the same dopamine and oxytocin hit that we do from playing with our dogs, especially cats, not as much. So it makes me question like, no, I think you actually do like touch. It's just emotionally confronting to touch a human. Exactly. Whereas you will play with your dog for an hour. Exactly. And there's something that's blocking you because then you have to open up, it'll open up some things emotionally if you're being touched. Yeah. That is interesting. Okay. When we come back, we're going to talk about self-confidence in sex and dating and how we can build that. But first a word from our amazing sponsors, that help keep our show free for all of you. And I got to talk to you about Good Vibrations. You know Good Vibes, right? I know that you'd been... Huge fan. Huge fan. Goodvibes.com. Where else are you going to go to buy sex toys, right? They have the best, latest and greatest toys on the market. What's your favorite toy? Do you feel like sharing? Um, I'm actually wearing... <gasps> the Crave! What? That's, I have that too. Yeah, sure. I usually wear thing. that every single day. It is the Vespa. Ves- Vesper. 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 Yes. By Crave. It is a beautiful, like vibrator, bullet, strong gold necklace. It's a little... They're very cool, very fashionable, and it's fun for, you know, 
party and cocktails. Yeah, now. like you never know when you're going to need a sex toy and you're wearing yeah. it around your neck as part of your outfit. It's an accessorize. You can accessorize with sex toys. And it's so funny because people won't even know what it is. I know. When Ex- you're just walking around unless they know right. what it is. But since know? I've leaned up on something in a meeting, have you ever done that yet? And like, it starts like, massaging, like oh, God, I got to turn this off. But that's awesome. You can also, um, yeah, they've got like toys for, and the great thing about goodvibes.com is you can like Google on their site, like I'm looking for a couple's toy. I'm looking for a clitoral toy. I want G-spot stimulation. I want to get into bondage. You know, Fifty Shades of Grey movies coming out, all that stuff. So if you go to sexwithemily.com, you click on the Good Vibes banner, and you use coupon code GVEMILY20, you get 20% off everything, and you see my store there, and you know I've tried every toy there, so I picked the best, so check it out. Okay. Yeah, and you can get the Vesper by Crave, which is amazing. Okay. Alex. So Alex, your book is Women, Food, and Desire. And then you also have, I mentioned this before you came in, and then you also have your podcast, which yes, is... The Crave Cast. The Crave Cast. Yes. Talking about cravings, all the root causes, and do some really cool interviews with people from different areas of health and empowerment. So you think that craving, so if we're craving something, it'd be, it's okay to give in, but we should look at why we're craving. What if we're craving bad things, like so, you drugs know, or triple cigarettes? Triple cheeseburgers. Triple like cheese. I mean, you know... Eating and sex are two of the most awesome parts about being a human being. They really are. But how much pleasure are you getting in the rest of your life? You know, how well is your lifestyle? So I don't necessarily think that sugar or kinky weird sex or one night stands are bad things. As long as you're safe, right? Absolutely. Either way. But are your cravings enlivening you and adding to your life's richness or are they depleting you right and are you stuck in a habit that's actually becoming dangerous for you you know sometimes having a piece of like i just ate a chocolate bar out in the waiting room with my girlfriend who i haven't seen in a long time <laughs> and it was so fun right and we had a great time and i f- i feel good and i'm not going to feel terrible later or right like it's moderation mm-hmm. right i Absolutely. mean you're not like eating in morning noon and night and stuff but if we're constantly judging ourselves and our cravings as bad then we are going to be in a constant battle with our bodies that we can never win. So it's really about learning to listen to and see what's underneath this. Is it a desire for a connection with someone? Am I trying to escape something? Or is there something going on health-wise? That's why I like to look at those four root causes of cravings I go into in the book so extensively because, yes, there are medical issues, and we need to find out if you have food sensitivities, but we also need to see how your hormones are doing. Yeah, what do you think about that hormones and replacement therapy and all that stuff? So, you know, I'm going to be 40 in a couple of months, and I've had hormonal issues over the last five or six years. I'm a huge fan. Like, find out what's really going on right. because you may be estrogen dominant. You may have no testosterone in your body. And if you can find out the truth and do a little supplementation, it can really change the trajectory of your life. It can really improve your relationships. I mean, if you've got no progesterone in your body, you're going to be biting your husband's head exactly. off. Exactly. <laughs> that could be the thing. People are like, why is that? We were, I just did, before you came in here, we did an article about a study that came out that, like, you know, sex lives are dwindling about married couples. I mean, it's nothing new. But people are just like, oh, well, we don't know do about it we're just gonna stop having sex and we're not gonna talk about it and then years go by you know you have to like deal with it like take it you know, like nip it in the bud like well, that's re- where the the fast food lifestyle really comes into play as well you know we are exposed to endocrine disruptors like phthalates and parabens in every product that we use grocery store receipts we touch them those parabens and phthalates get into our body they upset our hormones so we need to look and learn and that's touch receipts you don't touch them Either, you know, either take a picture with your phone and, or just have them throw it away. Absolutely. God, see, there's so many things. I'm there just are. so not as healthy and as I can be. And we're so sensitive. Our bodies are really sensitive. I know. Gosh. Okay. Well, what about self-confidence in sex and dating? So did you notice a difference in your sex and dating life after you started working on this and your cravings and change your diet and all that stuff? And how would you recommend other women so, to yeah, enhance their sex and self-confidence? You know, after my divorce... I won't go into all the gruesome details, but basically my ex-husband didn't prove himself to be trustworthy. Mm. So I, I internalized all that and I thought that it was my fault and I felt really unattractive and unsexy and I just felt dead. My libido Mm. was dead. And it took me a couple of years of like therapy and coaching with friends and talking about it and discovery to be like, oh, that wasn't like... It wasn't about you. It wasn't about Never me. Never usually the things yeah. that we make feel about something Rejection or whatever, we think it's all about us. We internalize right. it. It wasn't about me. So that 
it took some time. You know, I didn't just go right out of the gate and start dating, be like, I'm awesome, everybody date me, it's incredible. No, it took a lot of experimenting. A hundred first dates in a year and a half. It was that's like- really impressive. And then you did find someone, right? So it is a numbers game. So how did you overcome like your own like body and like sexual shame that you had? Do you think it was all through all this coaching or was it, did you just get healthier? Well, I was, your diet? I was getting pretty clear that I needed to get laid. <laughs> I'm, I'm a single mom. I'm still a young woman. I have needs. And I used to be very sexually confident. Like when I was in my twenties, I felt really good about sex. So I was like, okay, I used to feel good. What if I just like went out and had a date with someone and went home with them and what feels good to me. And if you can set aside the shame and that judgmental culture and culturation that we all have in our heads and just see what feels good to you, you know, you can find a lot of people out there who are willing to experiment with you. Exactly. No, <laughs> this is the time to do it too. When you're single, like don't have the shame about it. Have some fun, have go some out fun. and have some crazy sex. I had a great guy who was like my year long standing booty call where we had great chemistry, but we weren't going to be a relationship match. How'd you know that? I don't, how did I know that? And did he feel the same way? Because the friends are the same way. Okay. He did feel the same way. It was so funny. We were both very smart, funny people. I I like to think (laughs) I'm funny, but we just did not connect conversation wise. So you just got together and sex. We would just right. get together and have sex, if, and then I would date other people. And he, I was very clear with everyone I was dating. I am dating lots of people right now. That's what I'm doing. And they were cool with that? They were totally cool with that. Because some guys aren't. Some guys well, are then, like, oh. Then and then those are the ones they them. want more. Right. Right? And I, and yeah. Do you find that too? They're like, what oh, do you mean? I did. When right? I, when Triggers. I met my current boyfriend, Bob, I was going out with all these guys who are around the age of 45. Nobody would sleep with me. I was like, what is going on? They, they all wanted to be committed in relationships before we had sex. I was like, maybe if really? we had yeah. sex, I would know if I wanted to be in a mm-hmm. relationship. The guys yeah. were like that? Yes. I was like, are they all reading the same terrible dating advice what, book? Really? Usually, I, typically, it's more well, women. Well, she's probably not hanging out with the sleaze balls that you have. Oh, know, so. stop it. Okay, so this is interesting. That's really... So <laughs> That's they why it's surprising like, for Emily. No. It's just typically your women like commitment. You no see, sex they, for commitment. They look like used car salesmen. Oh, stop it. Just one. <laughs> <laughs> I also true. dated everyone who came across my path. Like, I dated vice principles from the New York City public school system. Right. It wasn't like I didn't have like a, a right, bar. checklist. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. No, that's good though. You just cause you get yourself out there and it's yeah. experience of like dating and talking to people and just, all that stuff. Just I, try it all. I do have a question going back to um, eating habits. Now during this time when you were so you're not vegan now, right? right? I'm sure or you went over that, I'm sorry. <laughs> so uh, when you were vegan, was it like I date people that have the like the same eating habits or No, I was never like that. Okay. I never made it a requirement. Good. I think that I think there would be a lot more vegans if the in the world if there was a lot less pretentious vegans in the world. Well, don't you think? Uh, yes, I agree. <laughs> because it's like I think I've only met one vegan in my entire life that's just like okay about it, you know, but every other one has to announce that they're a vegan and they have to wear a sweatshirt that says that I am vegan. Right. You know, and I think that's a big turnoff for people. It is. It is. And it's a very challenging um, group to leave Mm -hmm. because when I finally told everyone, hey, I'm not vegan anymore and this is why. Did you get shunned? Oh, I mean, (laughs) thousands of emails. Yeah. Death threats. I lost actual friends. Like, actual friends defriended me, didn't take my calls anymore. It's so crazy, right? It's it's very, it's kind of a, people get very religious about how they Mm -hmm. eat. It's how we define ourselves. Yeah. On a, in a very basic human way. So I tell people I'm never going to define how I eat ever again. Right, you know? exactly. It's going to change. So the vegans are like, we're out. You're no longer. And I know plenty of people who are vegan in public and are having the same health crisis that I was wow. and aren't able to tell anyone. So there's a mm-hmm. lot of oh shame God. around food. I just eat every, I just, yeah. moderation. There's so much shame around food and sex. They're really overlapping, which is why I wrote this book. I wanted to shine some light on it and say, hey, discover what's true for you now what works okay. for you it's all good right yeah yeah get rid of all that shame women like, food do, and desire yeah i don't care if people are vegan uh, you know <laughs> it's just <laughs> right. like why do vegans need Seems to hard, though. care so much about i know my eating habits and i think that if right if someone puts it on you i think they're if they're really cool about it i think they would get a lot more people to join their cause <laughs> you know absolutely well sometimes i think they don't want as many people like there's there's a certain mm-hmm. aspect of we're the outsiders as yeah. well like we're the we're the lone rangers mm-hmm. and maybe 
Maybe that's a part of the cool aspect. I don't Maybe. know. That's a whole other conversation. Okay, got it. Well, we, I was going to read an email. We have time for a, to have the answer an email here. Go for it. Okay. Hi, Emily. I'm a 28-year-old female and avid listener of the show. I've been in a relationship for about two years, and we've recently observed some changes in our sex life. Specifically... I often feel like I can't get it up and engage in sex the way I used to. Before, we had a very adventurous sex life, and the majority of the time, I could orgasm multiple times, squirt, and go for up to 45 minutes. Now, even when I feel turned on, my vagina does not feel the same leading up to our sex. It's not as sensitive. I can't reach orgasm as easily, and I don't produce as much natural lubrication. Thanks in part to your podcast, my boyfriend and I communicate openly about sex. He feels like these issues result from me not being as attracted to him, which is absolutely not the case. I try to explain to him that the changes are physiological and that I don't think it's abnormal for females to experience this in a long-term relationship. But I'm questioning my own logic. Is this normal? Is the physiological response all in my head? What can I do to overcome this barrier and inhibitly enjoy sex again? Thanks so much, Anastasia. Yeah. Have your hormones checked. Yeah, I think so too. Absolutely. Women, yeah, they don't realize it. They get premenopausal, like the whole thing. Like hormones are a big thing. And I understand that her partner thinks that it's him. They always, we always think it's us, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, And so it's not abnormal at all. And I'm just wondering, like, are you under, are you guys under a lot of stress? I mean, I, who knows? I think you first need to get checked out by your doctor because if she's talking about physical, she's not having lubrication. Yeah. She's not getting as turned on. So I think the first thing is, is, is talking to your doctor about it it's real, those are really common symptoms with premenopause, and it can happen in your late 20s early 30s like, i know that's a thing they don't tell you absolutely i it know come on soon so i think that um you got to take your uh the pressure off yourself and so you may think you're turned on but it's possible like there's also a disconnect between your body and mind you have a lot of stress going on in your life now um, you know, you might realize like, and now you might, it might be in your head about it, Anastasia that like, Oh, it's not going to happen this time. It's not going to happen this time. And I hope I can perform for him because he's thinking that I'm not into him. So I would say the first thing get checked. So you rule out any medical things at all. Yeah. And then, you know, I think that you guys just got to, um, I mean, it changes. This is what people, it wax and wanes over your life. I'm glad you guys are still, you're together and you're working on it, but sex just doesn't stay the same. And so there's a lot of different reasons for it. And it's something that you just got to maintain. There's yeah. another great book to look at Dr. Sarah Gottfried's The Hormone Cure. She's an incredible resource. She she's talks great. a lot about it. She was on my show years ago. Yeah. She's awesome. Yeah, she is awesome. Yeah, like go back and look at that one. That was great. I remember that. Okay. Um, okay, so what else, Alex? So where can people find you, find your book, your podcast, everything? Tell me. So you can go to womenfoodanddesire.com. And I've actually created a free 50 recipe cookbook that helps address sweet, creamy, salty, savory cravings, nutritionally and taste-wise. You can get that totally free at womenfoodanddesire.com. Oh, awesome. And then you can check out the book and order it. We hit number one on Amazon. Congratulations. And health and sexuality. That's amazing. Week. How cool is it to see me next to like Esther Perel's book and Sex at Dawn? I was like, That's this is amazing. amazing. I'm so <laughs> happy for you. Thank that you. is so, that is freaking great. I'm so, yeah, those are two of my favorite books too. Yep, love them. That is so exciting. I'm very happy for you. And congratulations on, on, on all your success. And then your, your website, we've got that, Twitter, Facebook. Are you cool? Okay, awesome. Um, thank you for being on the show. Thank you, Menace. Anything you'd like to say? Any parting words? Uh, just go to sexwithemily.com and make sure to follow all your social networks. Oh, thank you. Good yeah. Bad. It's all Sex with Emily uh, across the board. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Menace is Menace. M-E-N-A-C-A. Okay, everyone. Thanks for listening to Sex with Emily. Was it good for you? Email me. Feedback at sexwithemily.com. Okay, everyone. Thanks for listening to the show. And you hear me, um, you know, talk about ways to spice up your sex life. And if you've been hearing me talk about my massage candles... And you haven't tried one yet, you really should. They're by Emily and Tony. And I made these massage candles because he doesn't need to spice up things in the bedroom. Massage candle is the perfect way. You set the mood, you set the atmosphere, plus they feel amazing as you drip them onto your skin, the warm oil. And they are uh, made of coconut oil and soybean oil. And you can just use them. Like I light them at night. I don't know if it's someone to give a massage to every night. I just it smells amazing. Blow it out, pour it on my skin. It's like so luxurious and sensitive and feels amazing and, and um, moisturizing. You'll love it. And, and massage is a great gateway to intimacy, you know, and I had a listener say to me, you know, my girlfriend was really skeptical at first, but agreed to try the warm oil on me and gave me a back rub. Then I reciprocated and we had amazing sex. She could not stop talking about how good the candle smells and how great the massage oil feels. And I'm convinced that the scent in the candle helped us through some of the barriers to sex we face lately. So that's why I created these candles. So you can have the best sex of your life. So go to emilyandtony.com, use code Emily for 20% off. So thanks everyone for listening. 
Brandy Glanville is everywhere. Hey, everybody. Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Seriously, your sister's in the bathroom because she got here. She's wasted. No. No. wasted. Celebrity Apprentice. Um, which was hell. <laughs> It was. it was hell. Mm-hmm. But oh was God. it fun? No. And of course, right here at podcastone.com. That's podcastone.com. I think I kissed somebody last night, but maybe not. Thanks, Brandy.